Hello and welcome to another edition of Cigars and Pairings. I'm your host Brian and uh, tonight we're getting into Las Calaveras which is a really limited edition line that they've been doing since 2014. Um, I've been smoking them for a while and so I figured okay this year I'm doing them why not do the 2020 Las Cavaliers? So, Crown Heads, you know, they make it in my father cigar factory in Nicaragua. It is quite different from the rest of the lineup. I, I, I've smoked three or four of the lines since 2014. I gotta say, they all kind of were similar. They all kind of had very standard cigar notes, coffee and stuff. This one is bonkers insane. It's like, uh, this is, one of the most unique cigars I've ever had. I am excited to get you into this and let you know what some of the flavor notes were on this thing. So let's go ahead and check it out. The smell of the pack. Mm. Cedar and pepper spice. And there's like this faint hint of some exotic spice that I had never really encountered in a cigar. I actually had to do some digging and look at some other people's reviews to, to kind of nail down what this was that I was tasting in here. It's a, it's a really lovely cigar. Uh, Ecuadorian os Oscuro wrapper. Uh, everything else is Nicaraguan unspecified, so no other information on the filler or the, the binder, but the, the wrapper is what gives it the most flavor. And I can't say that I've had too many cigars with Oscuro from Ecuador, so I think that's probably where a lot of the floral notes in this cigar come from. Nice and oily, firm to the touch all the way around, no real, uh, I can see some veins pop up, but I mean, like I said, it's still such a gorgeous cigar, and all of these have smoked pretty well with, with minor touch-ups, but, but so like, continuing on, let's see, smell of the foot. Uh, now I love this, on the foot, I get licorice and I love it when I discover any cigar with like a licorice, you know, smell. White pepper and dried fruit, like uh, plum, dark fruit. All right. All right, so more spice, pepper spice and dried fruit. Well, a lot of times when I say dried fruit, it, it, it kind of implies that it's sweet this is a non-sweet dried fruit. This is like pepper spice and not in a bad way bitter, but like dried plum bitter. On the cold draw, I get cayenne pepper. There's like a orange peel bitters. Like that, that, that's ultimately what that, that bitter note is, I guess. But more like orange, like I like that. All right, I think we're ready to light this bad boy up. I didn't show a toasting, but I did toast. So in these first few puffs, I'm getting cayenne pepper. That follows through. Cedar. There's that hint of exoticness that I get. Not too much, but it's there. And toasted wood. Which I really like. It's not like burning wood. It's just like, you know, the smell of wood that's been dried by fire or something, I guess. It's, it's really a, a, a misleading open. You kind of think it's going to lean more into these smokier, you know, charred notes or maybe, you know, get into, but it, it's got some surprises in store. That that exotic note starts to take over and it turns this thing into like, I don't know, it's like, it's a chameleon this thing. We're definitely getting into this first third here. And this is starting to blossom into, you know, that weird creature that I said it did. <laughs> Not exactly a weird creature, but... Um, 
So this exotic spice, which I keep alluding to, I had to do some research. Um, but apparently, a lot of people seem to contend that cardamom is this note that I'm picking up because apparently cardamom is used in Turkish coffee, which I've never had. I've never had Turkish coffee, but fair enough. So that's supposed to be, this thing's supposed to have that really interesting note of cardamom. And I definitely get it. I mean, I'm getting cedar notes and, uh, and that orange bitter is still there a bit, but, uh, but yeah, so that, we'll see how it further develops, but it's a really creamy, nice cigar with some nice exotic notes to go along. And that's why this was exceptionally difficult to pair, um, especially the first pairing, the first pairing being the beer selection. This was nuts. I mean, I went through probably 20 different beers trying to taste Usually, I only, I usually do like a dozen, sometimes 15, so 20 was a, a big number, but this was, this was hard to make this selection, but I don't even know how to, how to really pronounce this. Schoff, Schoffenhofer? Schoffenhofer? Heifenweisen? Grapefruit beer. Heifeweisen. Heifeweisen. He, Heifeweisen. Huh? <laughs> I'm from Austria, so, you know. Uh, anyway, this was a really unique find for me. I'm not a big fan of uh, stuff like this, but this was really nice, and it pairs with this so well. It brings out those orange bitter notes, and the grapefruit notes in this just kind of really, really, they just marry really well with the citrus zest that I get from this cigar. Let's go ahead and... Pour it on up here. Oh, terrible pour. Oh, what are you gonna do? Hey, it looks, it looks like a fuzzy navel. But who cares? I mean, just drink it out of the can. Nobody will know. Mm. Hefeweizen. Hefeweizen. <laughs> yes, but this, if you can find this, this is a lovely summer beer. Really, really great for nice hot days. Low alcohol by volume, which is not something I'm usually a fan of, but I mean, if you're going to be outside chugging all day, I mean, this was great. And if you happen to have your hands on a Los Calaveras cigar, it, it really does marry nicely. So, mmm. I'm gonna enjoy this a little bit more and then uh, I'll come back with some more notes for the second third. For the second half, this is where the thing really starts to flower in a sense. And, um, the pun is intended because uh, this thing is just f f very floral. It becomes, there's, it's like, wildflowers and I think the best tasting note that I can give even though this is a weird one is potpourri. It's got a very potpourri-ish kind of floral note that I don't think I've ever encountered with any cigar. Sometimes I'll get a floral note here and there with the cigar but this thing is just like a flower bomb in a way in the second third. The cream is still there, and I'm still getting some cedar. The cardamom has, has subsided, but that potpourri, man, it's nuts. It's really nice. Maybe some people, they think potpourri doesn't sound like something nice, but hey, like I said, cigar smoking is about the experience, and to come across one that, you know, really strikes outside the mold of cigar tastes, you know, I, I'm interested in that. But like I said, this was an exceptionally hard cigar to pair with, and that case was no different for the second pairing, which is Glen Kinchy, 12 year. This is a single malt Lowland uh, whiskey. Um, not a lot of uh, Lowland so that I like, but 
This one has some really creamy, lemony notes that I found paired excellent with the cigar. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour a glass here. Now this stuff's a little pricey. It's a little, uh, you know, might be a little outside somebody's range. I think I paid 75 for this. So, hey, you know, I mean, it might not be everybody's go-to, but if you're celebrating with something like a Las Calaveras, you know, this is a limited edition run anyway. I find that, you know, you should probably drink something special with it anyway, and this stuff pairs with it really well. So, mm, it's like fresh cut grass and lemon. And there's like a, like a cream cheese note that just, that, that's what kind of sent it out of the park with this thing, because it's like lemon and cream, lemon and cream, or not necessarily lemon, but I got those citrusy notes in this. So, Glen Kenshi 12. Cheers. Mm. It's really lovely. Should be pretty easy to find. I think it's a pretty, like I said, there's not a lot of lowland single malts and this should be one of the only ones I think that's out there so so pick yourself some up if you think you might want to try this pairing let's do a retro hail cayenne pepper is back I get some of that cream and uh, earth has come out. It's the first uh, hint of earth that I've really got with this. But like I say, only really through the retro hell. I'm not getting too much earth on the regular draws, so. Mm. Well, I'm gonna enjoy my dram and smoke this down a bit more. And you know me, I'll be back for the finish with you guys. Moving into this final third, I went ahead and took the band off. You saw it in the B-roll, right? So we got the earth note that I kind of started to pick up in the second, third retro hails. I start to come out. It's a nice, you know, earth note. Not entirely barnyard, more just like, you know, damp earth. But I like that note. And then we got charred oak. Just a little bit of charred oak and that floralness, the, the hints of potpourri are still there. So if you want an experience that's really floral and unlike a cigar that you've had, that's, you know, I, I, I gen generally think most cigars are kind of chocolatey, coffee, you know, there's a lot of earth and barnyard and some caramels, nuts. This one strikes outside those notes. It's very, very unique. And I should probably mention that Las Calaveras really just means the skull or a skull. It's, it's supposed to be a line that's dedicated to those we've lost in the year before. I haven't lost anybody, but we did lose, uh, we did lose a, a dog this year. And uh, so I'm dedicating this to, to Riley, my buddy Riley who died this year, this February, so. Riley, this one's for you. And quite a cigar to go along with such a good pup. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Cigars and Pairings, and uh, cheers to you. I'll see you for the next one, and I'm out.